Hi guys, bring you a video today on these, uh, the 9037 pattern bayonet frog. Might seem a, an odd topic to do an individual video on, but the development of these through the war is, is quite interesting, and I'm not particularly happy with the videos I've done on 9058 pattern and so forth, where I've looked at the evolution of components with the set put together. So I thought looking at individual components of these might make it a little bit clearer. When the 1937 pattern equipment was introduced, the standard rifle of the British Army was the rifle number one Mark III, Mark III Star, uh, the SMLE, which of course had a 1907 pattern sword bayonet. And the frog that was subsequently introduced or consequently introduced is designed to take that bayonet. The main thing we're looking at in this video is the development of this from this design in order to carry the later number four bayonet. So at the start of the war, that was the standard British rifle. A problem arose when you wanted to carry the spike bayonet for the number four rifle. And this bayonet frog here shows the initial uh, July 1940 solution for this problem. You can see the frog is exactly the same. The frog itself is unmodified. Um, but we have here this little device with a brass uh, keeper here and a leather strap. And if we just flip this off here, and if I just bring the bayonet out of the frog, that we can have a look. You can see a leather tab which has a loop in it, a hole in it, um, which loops onto the stud of the, uh, the scabbard for the bayonet. And then we insert that into the frog in the normal manner. And you can see if I leave the, you can see what a loose fit that is in, in, in there. And if it's rocking around and so forth, there's a very good probability that it's going to pop off or pop out and it's not a secure fit at all. However, once the tab is attached and hooked on, which is a little bit tricky there, and pushed up so that it locks in place. We just, there we go, doing it to try and show the camera is a little difficult. The, the bayonet uh, scabbard is then firmly locked into the frog, isn't going to go anywhere. So this was the initial solution. The problem with this solution, well, it's it, making these is somewhat labor intensive, really. Uh, it's an unnecessary modification into say, you can modify the frog to do this, which is what was done later. You're also using brass and it's not a lot of brass, but if you're making thousands and thousands of these, you, you're using up quite a lot of brass, uh, which is obviously needed in other war industries, not least for making ammunition. So in 1944, the frog was redesigned and a design was introduced for modifying existing frogs. Now the frog introduced at that time was narrower, uh, however, uh, slightly narrower in design, um, but otherwise followed the same design. You'll see some of these if you're looking through frogs to buy and so forth, just the webbing itself is of a, a slightly narrower design, uh, but otherwise still had the loop for the, the uh, securing the handle of the sword bayonet. But the modification is to the top loop and you have a buttonhole let in uh, to take the stud on the spike bayonet scabbard. Now, the official way of doing this was to unstitch one side, take the loop off, make the hole, and then blanket stitch uh, the to reinforce the, the buttonhole in the top there. There's no evidence that this one has been uh, unpicked and then had the work done. It appears to have just been done with the loop in situ, but it's quite neatly done, and it's obviously it's not frayed over the years, so it's worked quite well. This design, uh, as I say, this, this modification to the design meant that both bayonets could be accommodated. Uh, and obviously that's very important because in 44 in Italy and in the Far East, the although the number four was becoming, was very much the standard rifle in Northwest Europe, the SMLE, the number one Mark III, Mark III Sar, was still uh, very much in use uh, in Italy and in the Far East. And indeed units would have a mix of different rifles. There are lots of photographs showing this. Uh, some men armed with SMLE, some men armed with... Uh, number fours or number ones, number fours rather, get the nomenclature right. So this uh, obviously modification was supposed to be done in the field uh, or by units and then uh, the leather tab would be returned to the Army Ordnance Corps. So mid-war, uh, early to mid-war, you've got the leather tab, later war, you've got this. Uh, it wasn't always as neatly done as this. I have an example here, which is an Indian made uh, bayonet frog. Primarily the ones we've been looking at here are, the, are British made. This is an Indian made frog and you can see uh, by comparison, it's had the same thing done, but very uh, roughly in the field. Uh, and consequently, the top loop of the, the burnout frog there is, is becoming quite frayed with use. 
Um, this uh, modification would be adapted in, into the design uh, and um, by 1945, uh, looking on Khaki Web, um, the top loop was being produced with, with this buttonhole just woven into the material, very similar to the 1944 pattern bayonet frog, which of course is made basically to the same design in, in green uh, as that very late war production 37 pattern with the buttonhole worked in again so that it would take either uh, or either type of uh, type of bayonet so that's the wartime development now post-war uh, with the number four really becoming the standard rifle um, and the obviously the uh, the number four and then obviously the number five as well uh, which had a, a slimmer uh, slimmer uh, scabbard again for its its bayonet its knife bayonet um, another design was introduced um, and you can see here this has a number nine bayonet in it the post-war uh, number four uh, rifle bayonet which is obviously has a blade as opposed to just the spike much as the spike is an effective bayonet uh, this is more more what a, a soldier uh, you know would think of in a bayonet in having the blade and everything proper peacetime soldiering bayonet um, so to say uh, and the frog was introduced uh, 953 this frog was introduced it's a simpler design again obviously no top loop because there's no handle to stabilize you have a belt loop stitched in there as with the other designs and all you have here you can see the maker's mark on the back there all you have here is a single loop of webbing stitched around which has a buttonhole worked into it which the stud of the uh, scabbard passes through so very very simple design and it just essentially simplifies manufacture to the, the point that these are perfectly serviceable and this design essentially uh, would be perpetuated um, for use obviously the, the 1958 pattern and so forth the frog uh, is on the side of the pouch as had been introduced with 44 pattern uh, but separate frogs for use with with the drill the working belt and so forth were made to a similar design to this but often with two loops rather than just having a buttonhole um, so uh, there it is that's the development of the 1937 pattern bayonet frog in basic terms if you're interested in seeing more detail to this and, and learning more about the nomenclature and so forth i highly recommend looking at khaki web uh, which is an excellent website on british and commonwealth web equipment military web equipment uh, link to which i've put in the description um, if you like my videos and you'd like to see more then um, please consider subscribing and if you're already subscribed or newly subscribing please uh, make sure you hit the notification button so you're notified of when i upload future videos uh, I also have a Facebook page and an Instagram uh, if you're interested in seeing more photographs of the collection as well. And I often post up sneak peeks of videos and things uh, that are upcoming. And I've put links to both of those pages in the description as well. So I hope you found that interesting. And until next time, bye for now.